Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hello there, mamas. Can you believe it? But we have actually made it to the very last episode of season one of the Gather Moms podcast. So hard to believe and so exciting. This has been so fun. So fun. Yeah. Not that we didn't think it wasn't going to be fun. No, but I think we didn't really know what to expect. Right. You know, it was just this unknown of like, how do you, I feel like I want to sing into the unknown. (laughs) Goodness gracious, Frozen is just like the soundtrack for all our lives, for like oh, everything. There's I have a song it. for everything in Frozen. I really think there, there is. truly is. And yes. I have a love-hate relationship with it. Yeah. I haven't watched it as much as you've had to endure it. <sighs> well, we, we got Disney Plus, and so Caroline just switches. Our four-year-old just watches Frozen 1, Frozen 2, Frozen 1, Frozen 2. <laughs> Will and there she, be a Frozen 3? Oh, she makes me play Frozen with her, and I always have to be Hans or... <laughs> Isn't Hans the bad guy? Yes, or (laughs) Kristoff, or the guard. (laughs) She's always the princess, and I'm always some dude. That is hilarious. Yeah. I'm going to start calling you Han. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, the game is she bosses me around for 30 minutes, and she's living her best life. I still love it because I haven't had to watch it as much, so I'm all about singing the songs. Yeah, that's what she asked me to sing her at bedtime, you know, so I'm like, not Jesus loves me, or... no. Well, mamas, we are on episode 10, yes. the end of season one, and we wanted to just kind of wrap this entire um, season of pandemic, yep. the Rona, the Pandy, all yeah. of it with the lessons that we have learned from COVID. Yeah. What if, what if this 10th episode is like, we put a bow on this season and a bow on the pandemic? Oh my gosh. You're, you're trying to make us like profits, like we are calling it the Listen. end. It could happen. (laughs) Let's just lean into it. By the time this episode comes out, there will be a vaccine across the nation and there will be no more COVID. (laughs) Woo! We're all going back. Can't wait. Can't wait. Let's hope for the best. I mean, let's hope for the best, right? You know, but it's all right if the Holy Spirit doesn't bring that around. That's okay. Listen, that we're going to talk about it, right? Although we we probably should talk about something different for season two. We are. (laughs) Oh, I'm so excited about season two. (laughs) Don't tell them yet. Okay. 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 Um, So let's talk about, because basically when I think about learning lessons, I think about school. Yes. Obviously that's been the question on everybody's mind for the past few weeks because we've all gone back in some way, shape or form, virtually, in person, at home, at a private school, whatever you may have done. So let's talk about what we were like as students when we were in school. So what kind of student were you? So... This may be hard for you to believe, but I was very quiet. What? I was very quiet and introverted as a kid. As you a didn't like, you know, social butterfly talk. So I had a lot of friends and I was friendly and everything, but in class, I did not speak. I remember my senior year, this guy came up to me at the end of the year and he was like, Kate, I didn't even know you were in this class. <laughs> You didn't say anything all year? No, because I was very, um, I, I was quiet and wanted, didn't like to get in trouble and wanted to follow the rules. Oh my and goodness. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So. I was the complete opposite. Were you really? I was the brown noser, front row Joe, answered every question. Yes. Talked all the time. Yeah. If nobody else was talking, I'll be happy to talk. <laughs> Yes, let me answer. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Now, I was a brown noser. I mean, my teachers, it was very important for them to love me the most. Yes. I want to do all the things you want me to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, I was pretty quiet. I really, I never got in trouble. I was, you know, more afraid of my parents than I was of the school. Yes. And when we were in school, we still had corporal punishment. That scared me to death. Like, did you get paddled? No. (laughs) My gosh, because it was like my worst nightmare. They were going to break out a paddle on me, you know. Did they really do that, though? I think they did. I mean, my dad tells me that kids got paddled when he was in school, but... yeah. I think I remember. I don't know. Okay. Attention. I got in trouble one time in elementary school. school. Yeah. Oh, I was always afraid of those (laughs) kids. (laughs) What 
did y'all do? <laughs> what what are these they sold drugs things? in the hallway drugs <laughs> you know and the drug dog would come to school i'm like oh it's just for practice because surely there aren't any real drugs here <laughs> i mean i didn't i was totally nice so when i was in elementary in our cafeteria we had one of those stoplights that has like green yellow red so green meant we could talk if we got too loud it would go to yellow and you had to like whisper and then if it was on red nobody was allowed to talk <gasps> how did it get to red were they just Ooh, like having yeah. a bad day and they were oh. like put that baby on if red. we were talking too much we got it got put on red so I remember one time we were on red and I was sitting at the lunch table with my friends and they dared me to pop my sandwich bag, my like Ziploc sandwich bag. I just can't believe that you didn't look at them and say, no, thank you. I will not be doing that today. No. So I struggled with wanting to follow the rules, but also wanting to be liked, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like I'm going to choose option B. Yes. And so I, and I usually just chose to follow the rules, but there were sometimes I was like, Oh, I'm a little curious. Was, was well, this- that was such a precursor to later in life. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> would this make a sound? You know, how bad would this be? So I blew air in it and I popped it. Rebecca, it made the loudest sound ever. Like it was so crazy loud. Everybody dropped to the ground. <laughs> yes. Well, that's kind of like not, I mean, that's everybody not a great looked. <laughs> In this day and age, seriously. Okay, but you didn't go to school in this day and age. No. This was a long time okay, ago. Okay, but I remember the punishment was you had to sit at like the bad kid area where like you like look at the wall. <gasps> Did they come straight to you? Were they like, we oh, yeah, know exactly oh, it was where that came so from. Obvious. And also probably my face was so red. I was scared to death when that and made that loud. And your friends loud. probably couldn't believe that you had actually done what they dared you to do. Yes. So they escorted me over to the bad kid table and I was like, oh my gosh, I never do anything bad again and I didn't I never got in trouble no I didn't do anything bad okay so I have to tell you what I did in school I remember that we had this log that you had to get your parents to sign every weekend before you came back to school on Monday Uh, just I just need just a note at first when you said log like I was picturing like a like a woodchuck lumber chuck some wood no I don't know. It was in a spiral. And I think it meant that your parents had just like looked at everything sure. for a week and yeah. like knew what was going on. And I did not get my mom to sign it. And I straight up forged her signature. I'm pretty sure it was like fourth grade, which I want to say to my fourth grade self, how did you even think that you could pull that off? Like, how does a fourth grader even have the kind of handwriting? Right. Because I have a fourth grader and there is no way her signature could look like mine. Well, there's no way it did. Yeah. I mean, like, surely the teacher, like, goes down the list of my mom. My mom has the most beautiful handwriting. Uh Uh-huh. So her signatures are just pristine every time. And then she gets to this one line and I'm like, it has to be obvious that this is not the real signature. I don't remember if anything bad happened to me, though. I don't know if I got in trouble for it or not. And then one other time. Do you have to play the recorder in school? Yeah. Is that like a thing that's been around for 100 Forever. years? Ever. Everybody's Forever. playing the recorder. And why did we pick the recorder? Can't we pick something else as like the baseline instrument? What else are you going to pick? I don't know. I just feel like it's what a real whipping for parents. The xylophone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I forgot my recorder. And if you forgot your recorder, you got detention or something. And I think I hid in the bathroom. For the whole music class. What? So that they did not know <laughs> that I did not That's have my genius. recorder. That's pretty genius. What in the world? Okay, so I was a closet bad kid about myself. So in high school, I started to get a little bit more rebellious. I went. I had a little phase. I had a little minute <laughs> where I hung out with the wild kids, and then like I like and I understood why the drug dogs came to school. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I mean I was never doing the drogas, you know, but I. <laughs> that word drugs is it the spanish word for drugs yeah you gotta watch narcos drogas? or something bad on drogas 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 cocaina <laughs> marijuana <laughs> oh my gosh i was not participating in those kind of things okay good but um i do remember i had first period study hall and as a senior this guy friend of mine and i would sneak off campus and go get shipley's donuts <laughs> So bad. You went and got a donut. That's so rebellious. <laughs> and then show up with little donut crumples all over your mouth to next period. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, I I did one time have Saturday school because I had too many tardies to first period. Basically, Rebecca, you know what? this about me. I struggle with being on time to things. <laughs> yes, I do know this, but I did not even like think that that would equate to your like school years where you're like not even getting to school on time oh man I struggled I still gosh lord I am asking you to help me <laughs> I'm like praying right now Please look help me to be more listeners it's not gonna work 
pretty much every meeting I go to with Kate, I'm like, I can be, I can be late because she's going to be later than me. So it's all good. In the oh, head. it's such a struggle. <laughs> so like me, my being late was not rebellious. I just like, I am not a good manager of time. Yes. So I, I had Saturday school one time and yeah, I remember being in the room on s- detention and it's like three or four hours or something. Yes. Yes. And it's like all these kids that are like, dang, do y'all even go to my school? Like, <laughs> Is it like the Breakfast Club movie? It's very <laughs> Breakfast Club situation. You were that girl. You were the girl that was like, she had your lunch and your books. You were like writing your paper like you were supposed to. Yes. I mean, yeah. So I was a pretty good kid, but you know, there were a little here and there as I was like, mm, that's good for us, man. We got to have some here or there's because when our kids make mistakes, we can be like, oh, dude. I yeah. totally, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're learning a lot from COVID. I'm yes. pretty sure that this is the assignment that none of us uh, signed up for. Like we did not choose this class. For sure, yes. Uh, when we were given the choice because we did not want to go to the school of COVID, but we are here yes. and learning all the things. And so I think it would be fun just to kind of talk about what have we learned through this season? Yeah. Why is it important? Like, obviously I believe that everything that God gives us in life is meant for right. something That's to teach it. us. So yeah. Why is it important to us? And then would it change anything for the future? Like, will it change how we do things after this? Like, if we magically are prophets and when this episode comes out, (laughs) COVID has a bow on it and it's gone. Yes. What will we do different in the future? Yeah. So start us off. Is there any lesson that you've learned from COVID that you want to share? Okay. So for me, I remember having this like epiphany somewhere in April or May and I looked around my house and I saw these people I had been, you know, basically who became my cellmates, you know, for months. <laughs> and I remember saying to God, thank you for these people. I like these people. Oh, that's so good. You know, I'm happy that I'm quarantined with these people. Yes. Like my kids are fun. And my husband's fun and we get along well. Everybody's easygoing and um, helpful. And like, I just, I had a new appreciation for my people. What month was this again? <laughs> was this, did you say April? <laughs> pretty, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> we were all feeling really good in April. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? <laughs> um, no, I, okay, the summer really did put a real. <laughs> You looked around you in the summer and were like, what? Yeah. That was like people. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, But even still, I think I, I think even still coming out of, of that and sending them back to school, I really think I have an appreciation. I feel like we settled into ourselves as like a family unit that operates really well. Like we came to learn more about each person, what makes them tick, what they need and I don't know. I feel like we really grew as a unit. No, I agree. I love my family too. And I was thankful for the extra time yeah. for the opportunity to stop and get to know them maybe, yeah. you know, cause we've been in such a rush of life for so long. Right. And I do, I love my kids and I love my husband too. I really, I look around myself and I go, man, I'm so blessed. Right. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. that's a good lesson. Okay. Here's one of mine. I think this might be a little spicy. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So we went into quarantine after spring break, which is like mid-March for us. And my son's 14th birthday was March 27th. Yeah. And then my next, my middle child's 11th birthday was April 21st. Right. And my husband's birthday was April 8th. So we had three birthdays really quick into this whole quarantine. And I'm just going to say it. I think that as... Um, mamas, we sometimes let birthdays get out of hand. Yeah. And we think that we have to blow the lid off yeah. and spend all the money uh-huh. and do all the fun things yeah. and go all the places to yes. make this the pressure one is real. day yeah. so special. Yeah. And in quarantine, it all got stripped away. Uh-huh. You could not have the parties and the friends and you really couldn't even shop for gifts and yeah. you didn't even need a gift because you weren't going anywhere. Yeah. And so we had to strip our birthdays back down to like, a cake, a uh-huh. homemade cake. Yeah. And a family around the dinner table. Yeah. And it was awesome. I love that. I just think it really taught me like, you know what? Sometimes I feel this pressure to live up to somebody else's expectation. Yeah. Of my kid's birthday party. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <sighs> Do you think that Pinterest was the impetus for this nonsense? Yes and no. I think 
Pinterest obviously gave us all the ideas that we never even dreamed of, but yeah. just social media in general. Yeah. You know, when you see somebody else do something for their child and man, it's so amazing and it's over the top and they just look so happy in the pictures. And of course your kids want the things that they see their friends have. So yeah. I think we just kind of fall into that. Yeah. Cause I feel like uh, among our friends and I, I feel like even for your first kid. Okay. So on, there's one hand where this is swinging like way one way because now we have like these gender reveal parties oh my goodness we got a party for everything right and the first birthday is a whole thing yes, yes. and you know but uh, so I wonder if it's as you have more kids that you start <laughs> you just you're broke I mean yes. let's just talk about the money <laughs> or if it's kind of a where we're starting to push back because I feel like I hear more and more mama saying hey we're gonna have cake at the park yes. you meet us there yes. that's what we're doing yes. right because that's yes. what our birthdays were totally my best birthday was like at a McDonald's I thought I would reach. Yes, yeah. I had one of those too. Yeah. My brother and sister still remind me because they did not get one. So I'm pretty sure I was the favorite. <laughs> My other favorite was I had a new kids on the block theme birthday party. That's I was wearing awesome. a t-shirt. I can picture it. And my mom got us glass bottle Cokes, <gasps> you know. That was like the greatest thing yes, ever. Yes, and she made Frito pies in the little Frito bag where you just pour the chili on the Fritos in the bag that with cheese. That is awesome. And I remember thinking that was just <laughs> fantastic. Yes. Nobody had party favors. No. There were not like, you know, water bottles with whatever yes, printed, labels, printed labels you know yes it was oh. just like super simple I just I really hope that we walk away from this with a different mindset for that yeah I like I really that I think just making somebody feel important on yeah. that day reminding them why they're loved and special yeah and not feeling like you gotta drop five hundred dollars for sure I mean let's any place that you want to go have a party these days is so expensive. It's so expensive. So we did, I just had one, well, I had my husband's, but I don't feel like that really counts. Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Um, we had Lydia's and she turned nine. And so we did Lydia Says Day and we had just like a big piece, piece of butcher paper that we hung up. And I wrote down, she, I was like, you pick, what are the fun things you want to do? And we just kind of got creative in pandemic. Like if we could spend a few hours doing things. And so she wanted donuts and she wanted to drive around and just say hi to her friends. And we just like took the van around town and waved at friends. You know what I mean? Yes, that is awesome. And it wasn't $500, you know? No, no. And so I, I'm with you. It was great. Okay. I think that's so that's one. one of the lessons I learned. Okay. Give us another one. What else have you learned? Okay. So for me, I learned that my kids are can do more than I was giving them credit for. Yes. They can contribute so much more. I yes. think that's another one of the reasons why I came to appreciate them. And also that one of the reasons we're working better as a family unit is because they learned how to actually clean a bathroom. Yes. They learned how to truly sweep and vac vacuum and mop a floor. Yes. They learned how to truly clean the room and how to pay attention to their messes and I mean, just a myriad of things, helping with their sister, you know, in this, um, Caleb started putting Caroline to bed. He Ooh, reads her. That's he, a winner. He, he reads her Jesus storybook Bible that's and awesome. she asks for Caleb. And I mean, there's just all kinds of things that it's like, man, yes, you kids are great. You know? I wrote down, I wrote down on my list that unloading the dishwasher is a great chore for kids. It's a great chore for because kids. Because over COVID, yes. the dishes have been so out many. of yes. control. Yeah. We're cooking every meal. We're drinking out of 14 cups a day. Yeah. And so the fact that my kids can unload the dishwasher for me is like winning the lottery. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. So in our house, we kind of have like some set chores of like every time we need this done, this kid gets flagged, you know? So like Caleb is the trash taker outer and the recycle taker outer and he puts the cans out and brings them in. Lydia is the dishwasher girl. Oh, get it. Get it, Lydia. But in COVID, there were so many dishes, like mm, you're saying, yes. that kind of, because we were basically running it every day, Yes, that we just, I would start rotating and just say, okay, Caleb, take the top shelf, Lydia, take the bottom or whatever, yes, yes. you know, but yeah, man, they were so good. They're so helpful. And I was thankful. I don't, I don't know what the quote is that necessity is the mother of invention. Oh, that sounds right. It's something that like that. Right. Yeah. And it felt like in, I couldn't do it all anymore. Right. Because right. of all that was going on. Right. And in that it forced us to like, okay. Yes. What can, what can everybody else do? You know, I've got to teach them. Well, and now going into the next season, they know how to do these chores. Right. It's so great for them to just continue doing them. Right. And it just makes the whole family unit survive better when everybody is pitching in and doing yes. something to help. Yes. yes. So yes. much better. That's a great one. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So one of mine was too much of a good thing can just be too much. <laughs> 
Okay. All the Netflix. Yes. All the pajama wearing. Yes. All the sitting around. Girl. All of it. It just like in the beginning, it was such like a, an, a dream. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, I don't have to set an alarm. We yeah. don't have to get up. We just get to stay in our PJs all day. And y'all, I'm just over it. I'm over it. It's too much. I agree, actually. I And I think I was with you. Like, for a while, it was nice. And I was happy to just put on leggings and, you know. But then <laughs> you have to, at some point, put on pants with buttons, and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I made some poor choices. <laughs> we circled through Chick-fil-A. <laughs> You too many How times. much bluebell have we eaten? Eat a COVID? lot of bluebell. Yes. Tasted all the new flavors. <laughs> Tried them out in a combo bowl. Oh, the combo bowl the best. Yes. Yes. So yeah, you know, I'm with you. It's I feel like we are kind of moving into I think just <laughs> having to go to all these dang meet the teachers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> had to be getting dressed and everything. And it feels good to like, oh, I'm a person again. Yes. You know, it feels yes. good. It gives your day purpose. And I yeah. think that's one of the things that I learned from this whole thing is that I enjoy having a purpose for my day. Yes. <laughs> I enjoy knowing that on Tuesday, I'm going to go get this thing done and I'm right. going to feel accomplished by the end of the day. Right. And there were so many weeks where it just felt like you woke up on Monday morning and you thought there's nothing. No. What there's are we doing? There's nothing this it's week. another day. We didn't know what day of the week it was. No. What, yeah. Yes. So I'm excited to go into this season with school, whether it's virtual or in person, back to work. People are starting to go back to work, um, back to stores and groceries and things like that. And just feel like I'm accomplishing tasks for the day Yeah, and I'm laying my head on the pillow at night and going, I just, I put it in today and now I'm excited to go to sleep. Okay. Let me ask you something. So we did talk about like COVID decision fatigue or whatever. Yes. So doing all the back to school paperwork and trying to like, like having to get the calendar out and put all the things. Did you like find yourself being like, oh my gosh, my brain is, yes. has not been using these parts. No. And I think that's across the board. I told somebody at work the other day, I said, when our staff finally does come back to work on a full-time basis, uh-huh. we're going to be exhausted by noon. Yeah. Cause our brains have <laughs> not had to function at this level in yes. so long. Yeah. And it's like by 1 PM I'm done. I'm yeah. just done. I can't yeah. think anymore. Bless my freshman's heart. He gets in the car after soccer and he's my talker and he just like it's like you turn the button on and off he goes oh. and I will have to look at him and go Jake <laughs> I just had a four-hour meeting I can put nothing else in my brain right now can you just make a list oh. make a list of what you want to tell me <laughs> and after I have had dinner and a spark yes we're gonna sit down you can tell me all oh, the things bless his but little I just heart. can't hold any more information in this oh. little head anymore I get it so the kids know that I have a taco meter which is not taco <laughs> crunch crunch. It's T A L K. Not taco Tuesday. Yeah. And so sometimes they'll be talking to me too much and I kind of put my hand up like to show like the meter is <laughs> over my head. And so they know that's my taco meter. And I'm like, I just I need this to come down a little bit, you know. That that's our so signal. Funny. Yeah. The taco meter. <laughs> We're gonna need a shirt for that. I mean, that's just awesome. Yeah, it's too much. Okay. Another one that I wrote down was that I need a chiropractor in my life. Oh, COVID taught me that the the art of chiropractic care is lovely and yes. awesome. I don't know, like, did sitting, you not go to the chiropractor? No. Well, first of all, we couldn't go for a while, okay. right? Yeah. And I don't know about you, but like laying in my bed <laughs> a lot more <laughs> and sitting on a couch where your back is hunched. <laughs> So maybe you wouldn't need the chiropractor so much if you weren't so lazy, lethargic. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't say lazy. No, it's truth. No, that is speak the truth to my heart right now because it is truth. <laughs> you were having back pain from yes. watching too much Netflix. I was back pain. <laughs> and really, I was like, I just need a chiropractor in my life because I need to sit up straight. I need to put my shoulders back. I yes. need to walk. Like I think walking is actually good for your body. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean seriously. Yeah, I learned that. I Whoa. love my chiropractor. I'm glad you learned that. Yeah. So for those kids out there that are thinking about what they should do for the rest yes. of their lives, I just want you to know that I think chiropractic care is going to be around for a while. You know, I was a late believer in chiropractic, and but now you know I love oh, we Dr. In. T. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, All so in. another one that I have that's a little spiritual but has some role, I think, um, practical components is I think I learned more than ever – that God is in control. Well, what do you know? And that he has got <laughs> us. Yes. You know? Yes. And it took a pandemic. I mean, listen, on a real practical note, think about the fact that if this were to happen three years ago, there was no Grubhub. There was no DoorDash. <laughs> 
There was, was no Old Navy online. I mean, think about if this had happened. When did Amazon start? 10 years ago? I think it's been a while. Okay. I don't know that I remember my life without Amazon. Let's say this <laughs> happened in 2000. We, I don't think we had Amazon in 2000. No, I do not think we had Amazon in 2000. Let's say this happened in two. Can you even imagine? Well, everybody thought happened, the world was going to end in 2000. Okay, fine. So once we made it through that pandemic. <laughs> well, but let's say it had shut down in 2000 and there was no Deli- grocery delivery. Oh, you're right. Food yes. delivery. Yes. Amazon. Yes. And there were stores that were online, but like not like it is today. Did we have drive through restaurants back then? We did. <laughs> right? Sonic? Taco yes, Bell? Yes. But they've gotten better. They've gotten better, yes. Was I Chick-fil-A mean, around in 2000? I feel like, yeah. Okay. I feel like. <laughs> but but maybe not as popular. Maybe not like as everywhere, you right, know? Right, right. So... I'm just going to say, people, if you question God's sovereignty (laughs) or that he knows how to provide for his people, just pay attention to the fact. Look at where we are. He did this. 2020 was a good year. Yes. (laughs) He knew what he was doing. You know, I'm I'm like, yes. Okay, fine. You got this, God. Whatever you bring, I know you'll take care of us. I think that's good, though. That's a great way to spin it on its head. Because too many times we're looking back at this pandemic with all the negative. Yeah. To be able to go, no. Like, think about it. God really did have I mean he knew all this ahead of time yeah so we know he's sovereign and we know that he knew about Grubhub <laughs> I mean right <laughs> can you imagine if like DoorDash yeah, we couldn't go to the stores oh I it's hard to even get my mind there <laughs> yeah Kate uh believes in the spiritually pandemic uh opportune time for I us do. to have COVID I do I think that's got God's signature all over it he's like I got you girl get it get it yeah. Okay. One of the other things I wrote down was, um, and this is spiritual too. Ooh, let's make Ooh. the little switch over. When given the opportunity to spend all day reading my Bible, <laughs> because I have the time all day to read my Bible. You did, right? I, I did not <laughs> read my Bible all day. So it's really not a time problem. With reading my Bible? Oh, wow. It's a discipline that hurts. problem. That hurts. With a reading bit. my Bible. Yeah. I really, I mean, I'm sure this thought crossed my mind at the beginning of this, you know, all, us, everybody going home was like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to do all these Bible studies yeah. and I got all this time now. I can yeah. just like leisurely sit in my armchair and read my Bible. Uh huh. And now I'm in <laughs> September and I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm not sure I did that. You did because we've been doing a Bible study together. I know you've been reading your Bible, <laughs> but I know what you're saying that it's like, it wasn't the pandemic that was keeping me from reading my Bible, is no, your point, it was which not. is very accurate. No. Um, I will say, and this is not anything for Kate, and I'm not trying to Jesus juke you, I have been journaling <laughs> so much more than I was before. Okay, that's good. Um, I feel like God has used this time to like dig up some deep down stuff. Yes. And I am moving slow enough that I can like stop and think about things. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I just think as believers, we so often blame our lack of relationship with God on life. Yeah. I don't have the time. Yeah. I don't have the margin. And it was so crazy to me that God basically gave us all this margin And I think for some of us, yes, I definitely did read my Bible over the pandemic, but it was not like, wow, I have, I'm going to just do all this stuff. I think there was a meme out there or something that it was like, all these projects I've been waiting to do, I've now figured out that time wasn't the problem or whatever. Yeah. It's discipline, right? Yeah. I think we assume that our bodies are so tired that they can't choose good things, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm so tired that I can't choose to do, I can't choose to exercise. I can't choose to eat healthy. I can't choose to read my Bible because it's just fatigue, man. I'm just, I've got too much. Yeah. And then we were given the opportunity where we had all the margin to make these good choices. Did we choose to eat healthy? Oh, <laughs> womp womp. Did we choose to exercise? Well, it's womp, summer womp. in Texas, so no. <laughs> Did we choose to read our Bible and pray? You know, like yeah. I just, it was a reminder to me that uh, spending time in my relationship with the Lord is really an indwelling of the Holy Spirit pushing me towards that relationship with God, right? Yeah. Like I cannot will myself. Yeah. I just can't. The, yeah. the sinful side of me, the selfish side of me, the lazy side of me is just going to win out. Yeah. I have to go before the Lord and say, would you please right. help invigorate my spirit? Gosh, and you know what? I can say it to be true that when I have said to God, I need help. I yes. want to want to spend time with you. Yes. He answers the prayer. He does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
And so for me, it was a great lesson for me to learn. You know what, God, I am not going to use that as an excuse anymore Yeah, because you gave me the opportunity to try it out and it did not work. <laughs> so, okay, we can take that off the list because that is not even true. Okay. Uh, I think part of that too, though, was honestly, okay, well, there's two components that I'm going to blame it on. One is there, there was a lack of schedule. And yeah. so you're just kind of like <laughs> ambling through the day, like... Is it 2 p.m.? Has anybody <laughs> eaten yet? You know? And yes. also, man, that that Netflix vortex, that'll suck you in just real quick, you know? And you're <laughs> like, dang, that went four hours, you know? When you can get to the end of Netflix and be like, I literally Is there an watched- end of Netflix? <laughs> I have watched all that I can watch on here, and there's yes. nothing good left. Yeah. Like, who looks forward to fall TV? I think we all are. Yeah. We're like, we're out. No, it Some hurts. Good stuff. Yeah. What no. in the world? I'm recycling back through stuff from the 90s and early 2000s, because, yeah, I've watched it all. Come on. You when calls the heart about to start you over. Yeah. <laughs> Lori Laughlin, I will forgive you for the oh, first yeah. few seasons when yeah. you're such a sweet character. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I was thinking about this, and just out of Scripture, what does God teach us about lessons learned? How does he teach us for these things? And I yeah. wanted to share a couple of Scriptures. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty nine says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think that goes back to what you said about this pandemic really reminded us that God is in control, yeah. right? That we felt like this heavy burden had been laid on us, this world pandemic, this virus, the fear, the anxiety, the worry, and that was not God's intention at all. No. No. He wanted us to be able to see him through the lens of that and go, yeah. look, I'm still over all of this. Yeah. That's good. I've got this. Um, I think that when we look to the life of Christ and we think about the example that he set while he walked the earth, he really did show us some things that were important. He did take time away to go spend with his father. Yeah. Um, I, they didn't have watches back then. So, no. I mean, I don't know if Jesus had like a daily planner. No. Like my schedule for the day. Walk to Surely. Jericho. Yeah. I don't know. No. Could he no. even walk to Jericho? No. <laughs> Jerusalem is that better? Jerusalem, okay, there is we more go. possible, yeah. But he still found time to do the things that were important. Yeah, he got away and had time with his father. He was able to show compassion to people, to teach and to heal. So watching just his life and how he made choices, I think we just look at ours and go, you know what? We're not going to make excuses. Yeah, we have time for the things that we have time for that are important, uh-huh. and we want to make time for those things that really are important. Yes. And, you know, to piggyback off of that, as we head back into potentially filling the schedules back up and, you know, some of those things coming back into our normal practice, that we're a little more careful with what we say yes to. Oh, so good. You know, before we just let everything fill back in, now that we've had this breathing moment and it's felt good to like, I've been sleeping nine hours, to be honest with you. That's amazing. I know. All the mamas with newborn babies are like, (laughs) you suck. But it's been really great to like sleep and go a little slower and, you know, give a little more grace. And so that is a huge one for us moving out of this is we don't want to go back to that breakneck pace. And I do think by the time this episode comes out, we will be back in a rhythm of life. Yeah. I mean, just all the things are already starting to like try to get on our calendar. So I think that's such a good word to go. Remember what is important, right? What are the things that you can say no to? Yeah. Don't feel like you're being left out. Remember that you're choosing family over stuff. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the last scripture I was going to read is from Philippians four verse nine. It says what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Mm. And so as we move forward, that question, like how are we going to take what we've learned out of COVID and put it into our future? I think it's the idea that I want to practice the things that I have seen in God. Yeah. The things that God taught me through COVID, the things that I read in scripture, the things that I know about his life. Right. Those are the things that I want to practice every single day because the scripture says that he is a God of peace and order and sovereignty and love and compassion. And when I practice my life in that way, I'm going to feel all those things. Yes. And when I start feeling that hurried anxiety, stress out feeling that that's a signal that something is off. Yes. Right. That I have, I have gotten off the right yes. train. I'm on the wrong train. Yes. Yeah. And we don't really want to go back to a pandemic. No. Let's not do this over again. Let's yeah. all just admit to the Lord right now. We got it. Yeah. We learned it. <laughs> we learned our lessons. <laughs> we don't learned make our us lessons. Go back. Yes. 
But what a gift. What a gift. It really had some really um, amazing opportunities for us to learn something we would not have learned any other way. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, my one big one walking away from this is the idea of holding things loosely. Mm -hmm. I think the illusion that I was ever in control of my life has been completely stripped away. Yes. And, um, you know, as we look to schedule things in the future and we're talking about what's going to happen in January and February and, you know, yes, it's just all, you're just like, it's just like they're in your hands before the Lord, just like, here you go, God, because it's up to you. Yes. You know, I'm yes. not trying to control this anymore. I realize I don't have control and I'm just holding this all loosely. No, that's so good. I think my one thing is that life is precious. Mm. You know, we were, uh, we had friends and we had people that we knew that yes. suffered greatly yes. from COVID and yes. We lost some people That's that right. we loved and it's, it's crazy to think that, that it happened. Like yes. it's almost like a dream, Yeah. but I just am reminded of what a gift life is and that really, I do believe that God is good and he's in control. Yeah. And so I'm going to spend my days glorifying and honoring him. And when those days are over, I'm going to get to go be with him Yes. and I'm not gonna have to worry about any of this stuff anymore. Yes. That's yes. good. No panties in heaven. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Maybe there's panties in heaven. But okay, no, no, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Mamas, thank you for joining us for season one of the Gather yes. Moms podcast. I cannot believe that we are actually here at the end of it saying, oh, Woo, we, did, we it. did it. We're so glad y'all are here with us. And it's going to be a great season two. We can't wait yes. for you to join us. We'll definitely have a trailer for that so you can hear all the great things that are coming. Yes. Uh, we love that you are here, for, here with us for this. We do not take it lightly that you spend your minutes um, in the car For sure. or cleaning your house or whatever you're doing to listen to our podcast. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss a single episode and stay connected with us, Kate Henderson at, on Instagram, uh, just at Kate Henderson mm-hmm. and then Rebecca Bradford at the Rebecca Bradford. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye moms. Bye.